What's up everybody and welcome back to Ben's Big Drive. Now in my experience, there are two types of disc golfers. Those who carry around a bag full of drivers and maybe a zone or a pig or something else. And those who have one distance driver, one fairway driver, and seven different rocks of different stabilities and maybe a couple of throwing putters. And from what I see, the vast majority of amateur disc golfers fall into that first category. Why does it seem like as a disc golfer, you're either a mid-range person or you're not? Well, I have a theory that it's because throwing a mid-range can seem very different from throwing a driver. And I'm gonna show you not only why that is, but how you can come to love throwing mid-ranges. And who knows, maybe it'll squeeze out that fourth destroyer that you really don't need in your bag. Let's dive in. Now in my experience, the key to throwing mid ranges well really all boils down to one thing and that thing is spin. Now let's be honest with ourselves. Throwing straight or throwing hyzer flips with drivers is hard. Even the flippiest wide rim distance drivers, if that disc isn't thrown perfectly clean, that strike looks more like a thunderbird and you're left wondering, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with this disc? Did I just happen to get the most stable strike in the world? Am I horrible at disc golf? Does anyone love me? Anyway, hyzer flips with drivers, they're hard. The wider rim a disc has, the harder it is to get spin on the disc. Think about it. Back to the physics classroom we go. Think about a tetherball pole. To all my Finnish and Swedish viewers, I really hope they have tetherball up there uh, or this won't make any sense. But when you have a tetherball and you hit it around the pole, it starts spinning around the pole slowly but as that rope gets wrapped around the pole and the distance from the ball to the pole, which the ball is spinning around, begins to shrink and gets shorter, the ball starts spinning faster and faster. This is because even though it's not literally speeding up, the shorter that the rope is, the shorter the distance the ball has to go to make a full revolution around the pole. Thus it starts spinning around the center Faster. The same thing happens when we throw a mid-range compared to a wide rim distance driver. When we go to throw a disc, all that spin that we put on the disc happens at one point, and that's at the pinch point between your pointer finger and your thumb. As the almighty Dave Dunapace calls it, the tip of the whip. Dave, if you're watching this, you're the ultimate goat and my inspiration. I promise I would make a valuable addition to Team Innova with my community uh, outreach, oh, my oh, disc oh, golf oh, skills, oh, oh, oh. and my, my undying commitment to... Now grab a distance driver and a mid-range and grip them both in your hand. Now notice how at the tip of the whip or at your pinching point with your throwing hand, how much smaller of a pinch between your pointer finger and your thumb you make with the mid-range as compared to your distance driver. And while it might not seem like much, let me blow your mind with some cold, hard facts. If the rim of your distance driver, meaning the distance from the inside of the rim to the nose of the disc, is twice the size of the rim of your mid-range, that means that where you pinch the disc in your hand is twice as far away from your hand when the tip of the whip comes through. Which in theory, in theory, commenters, means it's twice as hard to put the same amount of spin on the disc because the rim of the disc that you're spinning is twice as wide. I really hope that makes any sense. Let's put it another way. If the rim on your mid-range is half of the size of the rim on your distance driver, you have half of the distance in terms of rim size to spin the disc. Now think back to the tetherball pole. It has half the distance to travel around the center, boom, twice as easy to get spin. Now here's the other thing, and probably my favorite thing about having a small rim on a mid-range as compared to a wide rim on a driver and what it does for your throws. If the disc has a shorter distance to rotate around that pinch point, all variables kept the same, your reach back, your pull through, your form is all the same, the disc has a smaller margin of error to rotate around too much or too little, and you have a smaller margin of error in missing your line. It's the difference between throwing darts and throwing something like the handle of a hammer. Sure, if you're trying to throw both of those through a 10 foot wide gap, it's dealer's choice. But if you're going through precision, the tighter that you can pinch your finger, the smaller diameter of the thing you're throwing 
is, the more precise you can be with the fine motor skills of your throw. And this brings me to the first tip for throwing mid-ranges. Take advantage of that small rim size and pinch the rim of the disc with your pointer finger and your thumb and treat it like you're throwing darts. When you go to line up your throws with your mid-range, that precise pressure point you've got in your hand is priority number one. All of your run up, your reach back, your pull through, your et cetera, blah, 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 should be focused on taking that pressure point and hitting that spot, hitting that line. Now, when you got that mid-range pinched nicely and precisely in your hand, and you sling that pinching point to the target, the disc has no choice but to hit your line. Now the second key to throwing mid-range as well is basically the part two of the first point and I think is the secret sauce, secret sauce, bringing it back, that people who don't like throwing mid-ranges can't get right. Now the second key to throwing mid-range as well is to focus on spinning the entire disc on the same plane around that pressure point. Now at this point, if you're really paying attention, you might think, Ben, aren't these just tips for throwing any disc well? Well, yes, yes they are. But the reason that this is uniquely important for mid-ranges is because mid-ranges not only have a smaller rim than a distance driver, but they usually have a wider diameter as well, meaning the whole disc is wider. This means that when you hold a mid-range in your hand in your throwing grip, your hand is wrapped around much less of the weight or the plastic of the disc compared to a wide rim driver. Now, remember the forehand release video that I did a while back? Go watch it if you haven't. The key to getting a clean release in a forehand is to make sure that the whole weight of the disc is supported in your hand so that when you go to add power onto the disc, it is applied evenly to the whole thing rather than to just one side and that will cut out most of the wobble in your throw. Now the same exact thing applies here. Now with a mid-range, because so much of the weight of the disc is towards the back side or the side away from your throwing hand, when you throw a mid-range, it is even more important to support the entire weight of the disc when you're throwing to get a clean release and a nice glidey throw that goes a long way in a straight line. So think about it this way. When you go to spin that disc around the pressure point at the tip of the whip, Try thinking about spinning the back edge of your disc around towards the target rather than taking that front edge and spinning it towards the target. Now what this will do is it'll subconsciously force you to think about the nose angle of your disc because if the weight of the disc is not supported and the disc is not level with your line, the back of the disc will end up above or below where that pinching point was when you released the disc and your throw will come out Wobble Town USA or Wobble Town Finland or Sweden, Japan? Let me know in the comments. Another thing that this will do is it'll force you to keep your throwing hand on the outside of your disc through the power pocket because if you don't have your hand on the outside of the disc, there will be no room for that wrist to snap through and to start that spinning motion to get the back nose of the disc spun around flat to the front. So to throw a great glidey mid-range straight shot, a hyzer, anhyzer, hyzer flips, what have you, focus on making that pinch point close to the rim of the disc, bring that thumb out towards the rim, and aim that dart down the fairway and spin that disc levelly on the same plane around it. Once you get this down, you'll have a tool in your bag that allows you pinpoint accuracy with the way that the small rim allows you to grip the disc with this tight pinch. And also you'll have a tool that gives you a feel for controlling the nose angle of your shots while adding a shot in your bag that is easily controllable, has the potential for big distance, and in my opinion, is the most fun shot in disc golf to throw by far. That's it for this one, and follow along for more of Ben's safe mid-range shot 250 feet down the middle of the fairway. Heads up. That's just beautiful stuff. It doesn't get much better than that.